Okay, so it should be recording right now. So this is um, module on one, and uh, see we did some of this last time, huh? <coughs> so every chapter, every module begins with some scenario. They try to uh, get you different instances of applications of photonics in uh, different uh, branches of electronics. So as you go through you see more and more applications and get, you get more familiar with the subject. Um, I believe we've talked about this last time. This is <coughs> here a picture of um, uh, it can be a drop or it can be a, a marble here falling into a, a calm body of water and creates these waves that we talked about. So you can see here the the crest of the wave and you can see here the crest of a um, the adjacent successive wave and then distance between this crest and that crest is what we call the wavelength lambda. Okay. We can uh, display a wave in a two-dimensional graph, like this one here. And uh, as you can see, this is the crest of a wave, the next successive crest, the one after that. And you can measure the wavelength from crest to crest or from trough to trough. Either way, uh, you get the same number. So when it comes to light, wavelengths for light, if you remember from last time, are very, very short. We go down to nanometers. Okay? And if you remember, the wavelength for red light is about 700 nanometers, and the wavelength for uh, violet is about 400 nanometers. Now this is another graph which shows uh, a wave, it can be a, a wave of light, it can be a, an electromagnetic wave. Actually light is nothing but the electromagnetic waves with respect to time. This is very similar to what you have seen before in uh, AC circuits in devices 1 and 2. The this is the amplitude here. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you look at the two successive peaks <coughs> of a sine wave, and we measure the distance between those two, that's the period. <coughs> uh, in uh, previous classes, we used F for frequency. When it comes to photonics, in this industry they use the letter nu. It looks like a V, a small V. It's the Greek letter nu. Okay? So we'll be using this letter to be consistent with everything else. And also, uh, a little bit confusing, we use the letter V, capital V. So capital V is used for velocity. So if you talk about the velocity of a wave, how fast it travels, we use capital V for the frequency, lowercase nu. Here is an example of um, <coughs> three different waves. The top one has a frequency of 4 hertz, bottom uh, middle one 2 hertz, bottom one 1 hertz. So uh, definition of frequency is how many of these uh, cycles you have in, in, in one second. So if you go down here, and actually it would be nice if I change the color now here, 
let's see let's use green for example so if you start from this point to this point right here that's a distance of one second okay up here on the top you can count one two three four cycles in one second that's why you have a frequency of four hertz middle wave you have one two two cycles and on the bottom from this crest to that crest you have one cycle so <coughs> frequency is the number of cycles you have within the time frame of one second okay now when it comes to light which is made up of electromagnetic waves all electromagnetic waves consist of two fields you have a magnetic field and you have an electric field and when you look at this animation the electric field is the vertical one and the magnetic field is the horizontal one so when a radio wave is emitted typically from an antenna it actually has these two waves it has one wave which is uh, vertical and another wave at, uh, at right angles to it which is the magnetic uh, field and both are emitted and they travel at the same time just to give you <coughs> an idea if you have uh, if you have an antenna for television reception at your house if the antenna has um, it's a, what we call a Yagi antenna and it has a horizontal boom like this and then it has somewhere where the uh, antenna cable connects it has what's called a folded dipole behind it it has some bigger elements longer than this typically one behind it and in front of it it has elements which are becoming successively smaller okay and then and then from here you have your wire which goes down into the house the orientation of these elements here which are called the directors has to match the orientation of the electric field from the transmitter so for television the orientation of the electric field is horizontal okay so if this is on a on a mast attached to a mast above your house then these are horizontal they are parallel to the earth these elements and the antenna over here at the television station has to be has to have an element similar to this which is also um, horizontal if this is the the transmitting dipole it has to be horizontal so they match one another okay this is for television TV now let's change the color here let's go to blue now for radio think about the antenna you have on your car isn't it sticking straight up okay so if this is your car here uh, don't laugh at my car okay somewhere you have an antenna sticking up like that well that antenna the orientation of this antenna is vertical so it receives the radio waves coming from the
transmitter of the radio station. So here, the radio station antenna has to be vertical, the electric field. has to be vertical. So the radio waves are transmitted and are received in the vertical direction. Okay? They could have made both of them vertical or both of them horizontal because there is enough difference in the two frequencies. For example, um, broadcast uh, FM is 88 to 108 megahertz. Today, television, the new digital television, high definition, it's all UHF. All the transmitted frequencies are greater than 300 megahertz. Okay? So there is an odd separation between the two. But to make it even safer so that there is no interference between the two, they decided years ago to have one orientation for television and another orientation for radio. And those have to match the <coughs> orientation of the electromagnetic wave transmitted at the uh, antenna, the transmitter. Okay? So, when light is transmitted, uh, every ray has an electri electric wave and a magnetic wave, and both of them are at right angles. Okay? Light coming from the sun, the electric and the magnetic ray of each uh, ma orientation of each ray are at right angles, but if you think of one ray to the next ray, the orientation is random. So if you can imagine those billions and trillions and hundreds of trillions of rays emanating, they are all random. There is no certain orientation. If you somehow are able to take all of the light coming from one source and make sure that all of the rays have the electric field in one orientation that you know and the magnetic field right angles to that and they don't change, that kind of light is called polarized light. Okay, we'll talk about how you can polarize light. <coughs> so this is the same graph without the animation. You can imagine here this is the source. Um, if this is the sun, or if it's a light bulb, like a fluorescent light or a uh, incandescent light, you can imagine that you have billions of these rays with an electric field and a magnetic field on each one of them. And then you have all of these rays emanating, and they are all random in their polarization. Okay. <coughs> this is the uh, a chart similar to the one you have in your book. It has the whole spectrum from radio waves to gamma rays. Radio waves have low frequencies compared to microwaves, infrared. Then here you have the visible light. This is the spectrum of the light which you we humans can see. <coughs> By the way, uh, you may know that some animals can see in the, in the infrared, and some animals can see in the ultraviolet. Okay? Which animals see in the infrared that almost everyone is familiar with? Raccoons, owls, uh, bats, all of those, all of those uh, animals they can see in the infrared much better than we can. And then there are animals that they can see in the UV. Okay? Um, it's usually birds. They have uh, 
higher sensitivity in, uh, in that range. But we humans can only see in that range. And then if we expand that range, that's what we have up here, then we start all the way from red to violet. And again, this is, these are things that you need to remember. Uh, the wavelength of red is 700 nanometers. The wavelength of violet is 400 nanometers. <coughs> Excuse me. And then somewhere in the middle, where the human eye has the highest sensitivity, the plot of the human eye sensitivity would be something like this. The peak is somewhere around 532 nanometers, which is green. That's where the human eye is more sensitive. <coughs> That's another view of the same information in a different uh, <coughs> different format. Low frequencies down here, and as you go up, the frequencies increase. Look at this. Low frequency, low frequency, high frequency. Okay? That's new. This is new. <coughs> radio. What is radio? Let's say FM radio. 88.9 megahertz. That's the, the college's radio station. Then you, when you go up here in high frequencies, actually that's the little extra credit project I gave you. Um, <coughs> you go way, way past gigahertz and terahertz. You go up into the hundreds uh, of terahertz. That's light. Now, look at this here. This is wavelength. These numbers here. Oops. I'm going to choose this color for wavelength. This is lambda for wavelength. Look at the wavelength for violet, 400 nanometers, 500, 600, 700. The wavelength increases as you go down at lower frequencies. <coughs> so wavelength and frequency are inver inversely proportional. Okay? 700 nanometers, that's a lower frequency.